today we're going to be looking at a waterfall cardigan. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel Casualistic and hi to my new subscribers, thank you for joining me. Um, so today we're going to be looking at a cardigan. Um, this was something that I hadn't originally planned to make but um, because events going on in my life it was something that I was going to need so I had to work on. Um, so those of you that have watched the last couple of videos will be aware that um, I recently lost a family member. Um, her funeral was um, Monday j just gone on the 3rd of July um, and one of the requirements was that we um, wore bright colours. <clears throat> so I had to buy a top um, especially because most of my smart stuff uh, for things like that are quite dark colours. Um, so to buy a top especially but I had no um, bright coloured cardigans um, and despite us having that heat wave very recently and I had all the heat stroke and everything um, the weather had had turned quite cold it's gone hot again <laughs> so the week was sort of just before the funeral was was quite chilly here in the UK so I thought I was going to need a cardigan so I spent the whole week grafting really really hard to try and get it done obviously I had the deadline so I had a, t a cardigan that matched my top, colour wise, and that was bright, etc, etc, so it wouldn't be cold. Um, as it turned out on the day, uh, it was, the sun came out, it was a really, really hot day, ended up not using it. Um, it I just, just with the smart top I had on in the crematorium, I had sweat pouring down my back. Not attractive, I know. But it's uh, not air conditioned, there was a ceiling fan and the place was packed. But we'll talk more about that in a bit. So we're going we're gonna to talk more about um, the cardigan to start with. Um, so this is the cardigan. It's quite hard for me to fit it all on camera. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put a picture that uh, my friend took of me on the day. Um, I do look quite miserable in the pictures, but hey, I was going to funeral, so you, you have to forgive me for that. But you'll be able to see me um, dressed all dressed up, ready for the funeral with it on, um, just so you can see what it looks like when it's actually on. But it's basically a waterfall type cardigan. Um, it is sort of quite a lacy cardigan. Um, I don't honestly think I could have got it done if it had been like a solid um, car cardigan with no holes in it. <clears throat> so this is it. So it's got the waterfall um front as it's called um it's got full length sleeves um <clears throat> and this sort of ends up with sort of like a collar it's just where it folds over to create the, the waterfall um, like i say i can't really get much further back than that really but you kind of get the idea and that's the the back of it so you'll probably spot straight away that the um, the centre part of it is basically based on a form of a granny square. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the cardigan. I've kept it on the hanger just so that it, it sort of holds its shape a bit better so I can show you. So there's both sleeves. So there we go. Um, so the yarn that I used um, was um, yarn that uh, Grace had very kindly sent me. Grace said that I could make stuff for myself, not just um, do stuff for charity. Um, so I knew it was okay to, to use this and uh, the colours fitted perfectly with my top because my top had um, butterflies on it that were pink and orange and sort of a purpley blue. Um, so I've been using the Karen cakes that she sent me. Um, I will link Grace's channel down in the description. Um, so the Karen cakes that are used um, are beautiful. These are all the colours that are in it. So you've got there's a dark pink, light pink, blues, and sort of a turquoisey colour. Um, and it's uh, called mixed berry. Um, so as with all Karen cakes, it's 200 grams, which is 7.1 ounces. 383 yards or 350 meters and it's a medium number four weight for those of you in the US. So that's what I've used. Now I've used two and I'd say you ran about two and a half. Um, I've actually tightened the ball band on this. Um, so I've used two and a half cakes for this. That's quite a lot of um, yarn for this top. <coughs> I think tops do sort of cardigans that do eat quite a lot of yarn don't they? So the uh, pattern I've used is um, 
by Drops Design. Um, it's gone. Uh, the website is www.garnstudio.com. Um, obviously, I'll link the pattern down in the description. Um, and it's called Around the World by Drops Design. So that's the name of the pattern. And this is what their one looked like. Obviously, much more muted colours. I probably would have done a more muted colour one, but obviously, circumstances, I needed a bright one. Um, I do tend to go for darker colour cardigans on the whole. Um, so the hook size I used was what the pattern called for, which was a 5mm hook, which I think was what was recommended for the Karen Cakes. Yes, it was. 5mm, so that fitted with the Karen Cakes perfectly. And the yarn that they called for uh, was Drops Big Delight by Garn Studio. Um, it does give you the number of grams depending on your size. So uh, if you were small it was 400 grams. Um, if you're medium like me, uh, 500 grams. And then it goes up into the larger sizes which would be six or 700 grams. Um, so it does give you a good idea. and I. I've I've used about 500 grams, so so that is pretty much spot on for for what I've um, used. <clears throat> now the pattern, I think, if I remember right, is tra originally translated from something like Norwegian. So the only thing I will say about the pattern is it's not terribly well um, written out. It's not. I like patterns where each line is spaced out and is very clear. Um, it wasn't terribly clearly written so I was definitely not for a beginner um, and some of the stuff didn't really fully understand just by reading the pattern but when I got to that po different points that I wasn't understanding on the pattern to f when I got to physically doing them they made more sense if that makes sense I find that with sometimes patterns I read them and I don't understand them at all but actually when I get into it and I've got the to that point and the patterns in you know the, all the materials in front of me then um, sometimes I can make sense of it so this was very much one of uh, those patterns um, the only thing real problem I had with the pattern was the sleeves made no sense uh, as far as the decrease rows were concerned um, it called for decreases um, on every sixth round um, and you were supposed to repeat that 12 times. Now, if I'd actually done that, my sleeves would have been absolutely like double the length of, of what what was called for. So I'm, I'm not sure if that's a typo or whether I wasn't understanding the pattern, but it, that's how it read. So what I've done on the on the sleeves, um, I to get I've actually tried to get the sleeves to match as much as I could because it's just something that I'm a bit OCD and it would have bothered me so I would do so many rounds and then swap to the other side so I was alternating so I did have a lot of ends to weave in um, but I think they've come out sort of I'll try and do it like that I think they've come out fairly even as you can see they're not perfectly even there might be a row or two difference with the colours um, but yeah, fa fairly even. So for the sleeves, um, I actually did 31 rows. That's That fitted the length of my arms. Uh, and I did decreases on the 6th row, the 12th row, the 18th, the 22nd, the 26th. On, um, on row 28, I did a decrease on the opposite side of the sleeve because it was fanning out a bit and I didn't, I didn't like that. So just to help it come in again and then I did a final decrease on the 31st row which was the last row and um, just to bring it in um, so I was kind of um, I did do some of the six row decreases but towards the bottom I made them more frequent basically um, <clears throat> and then on the cuff I just did a single crochet uh, border um, that's double crochet that's US single crochet US terms double crochet UK terms just to try and make it look a little bit more form, more finished it didn't look quite finished to me so um, I haven't single crocheted anywhere else or double crocheted in the UK terms um, all the stitches are US doubles or UK trebles um, and there are some uh, US double crochet two together or UK 
uh, treble crochet two together. Um, so it's fairly straightforward. So the pattern starts, uh, basically, where are we? There. Starts here as a circle and then uh, basically works out and you start forming a square. Now the way the cardigan is constructed is you start off and you basically have, um, it's all double crochets and chains as you can probably see. Um, so all treble crochet and chains if you're in the UK. And uh, you just basically do a square. Then what you do is you do two side panels. So I'm going to just show you this little bit from the pattern. It's not really giving anything away. Um, but it does, um, the pattern does have the chart for, I'm going to hold this long way so you can't read it. Um, it does have a chart for the centre square that I've just shown you. Um, so if you prefer charts to get you started, that's a good thing. So this doesn't really give too much away, but this is basically how it's constructed. So you do, basically all this is a granny square. And then you work a side panel here, and then you work a side panel there. So basically you're just um, widening your square to make it more of a rectangle, basically. So you just crochet up and down the lengths on either side. <coughs> and that creates the waterfall effect. So this point is what hangs down. And then you have, uh, obviously you add on the sleeves at the end. So actually, sort of um, construction wise, it was actually quite simple. Um, this is the first pattern I've ever managed to do without a tutorial. Now, on the website, it does say that there are videos to help you. There is a video to help you get started, which I didn't need. Um, for the more complicated bits, there isn't. It shows you how to do basic stitches and stuff, but it doesn't really tell you how to show you how to do it. So there was no video for this um, on their website. I haven't actually looked on YouTube. Um, I will have a quick look before I upload uh, this video, and if there is one, I'll obviously put it down in the description, but as far as I'm aware, there isn't. Um, <clears throat> so on the whole, the pattern was a bit tricky to read. The design of it was quite simple. Um, I mean, you could really make it up yourself, really. It's just the measurements that you need, isn't it? You know, granny square, two side panels and sleeves. So, um, construction was pretty easy. Um, I'm a big fan of the waterfall ca cardigans. Um, you know, it covers a lot of things, doesn't it, when you've got lumps and bumps and stuff. So, um, I just like, for me, I just like the way they hang. Um... I just need to tell Chip off one second. She's doing something she shouldn't be. Hi, I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, they say don't work with animals and children. And uh, uh, for those of you new to the channel, Chip is one of my cockatiels. Um, she is tame. Our other one is not. Um, so we do let her out. Um, I have a hamper that um, I have, you know, the ones, a bit like a picnic hamper, but on a bigger scale. And I, I, I store all sorts of bits and bobs in there. And she's got this obsession of going down and eating it, basically, which A, isn't good for her, and B, absolutely wrecks it. Um, she hasn't done it for a long while, but because I'm ignoring her, because I'm talking to you guys, she misbehaves. The last two or three videos I've done, she's misbehaved in every video. Um, she's going through a bit of a toddler face, so it seems, even though she's older than that. But uh, I think it's she wants attention, but when I try and bring her on camera, she doesn't want to know, so can't win <laughs> so sorry about that sorry for the interruption <laughs> so working with animals yeah never a good thing unfortunately she lives in the room that I record so I can't really avoid it so sorry about that um so as I was saying um it's quite a straightforward design and it is one that potentially you could make up for yourself um it is just uh US double crochets UK trebles and chains uh mainly chain threes um really straightforward really in that respect um would i make it again um yes i would because i've made a note of what i did on the sleeves hence what i was able to tell you um i would do it it took me about five days of pretty solid crochet and i put a lot of hours in uh housework went to pot um it looks like world war three in our flat at the moment um Partly because I was crocheting most of last week trying to get the cardigan done and then ended up not needing it. So, um, and then there's some other reasons. So, um, yeah, that's 
basically it for the cardigan so I'll give you one last whoop, one last look so as you can see if I hold this out you've got a side panel that's just a rectangle but when you let go it becomes a waterfall so I really think that's really really clever but I will put a picture of me wearing it like I said uh, I've got a miserable face but I was going to funeral so what can you expect um I'll put that at the end of the video for those who want to shop uh, want to skip to the end then that's fine I will see you next week um so life update um yeah uh funeral went uh really really well uh it was at our local crematorium it was a bit of a strange day for me because it was the same day that I'd married my ex-husband so it was all a bit of a you know you sort of thinking back where you were so many years ago and now you're at a funeral it's, it was bit of a strange headspace for me um but uh it was nice to see some of my extended family that I haven't seen for quite a few years even though we all live in the same town we've got quite busy lives and um most of the matriarchs of our family have passed on um my nana was one of them uh, my great aunt which um was was another one um and it was her daughter that that's passed away which is my mum's cousin um so uh but I've grown up you know visiting them and you know I bump into them in town and things like that so they have been a constant part of my life and it's part of my local family so my local family has diminished quite rapidly um over the last 10 years in particular um but the funeral uh the crematorium our crematorium isn't massive but it, it's it's a reasonable sized room um and it was packed and we only just fitted all us family members in because all the uh sort of <coughs> friends and acquaintances went in first and then we followed in as a family last and there was only just enough room left for us all because uh, it's quite we've got quite a big family so um it was very very well attended considering she was in her 80s when she died um I, yeah it was a lovely service um her grandchildren all got up and um spoke some of them are in their 30s some of them are only very young teenagers um so there's a wide spectrum with them their memories and one of her well i think both her daughters got up to speak at different points one to read a poem and so on and her son-in-law conducted the service so it was a really really lovely service um and we did go to the wake afterwards and it was very well attended uh, it was a very very hot day the crematorium was at the point of i think if we'd been in there much longer we might have had some fainters it was pretty hot in there um, so I definitely didn't need the cardigan after all that work but i've got it to wear for the winter and it, at least it'll be bright and and stuff for the winter um i do love this uh cowl cake yarn it's really really soft um so um i'm really really pleased with that so at least i've got something really quite productive and useful that that i'll be able to use over and over so just want to say thank you grace for the yarn um if i hadn't been for you i wouldn't have even been able to make the cardigan so um thank you i really appreciate it um yeah and on other news um the day after the funeral um i went i did the usual stuff that I normally do um, <coughs> things like shopping and stuff and one of my mum's um, older dogs um, needed his claws cutting so um, I went with her because uh, when he gets outside of the grooming place um, he will put the anchors on and lays down just doesn't like it um, we've never left him on his own nothing bad has ever happened to him he just doesn't like going in there um, even though he's a small dog he's quite big for his breed and basically what happens is the last few times we've gone i've gone because my mum's getting older um so i've been picking him up um but he's on the brink of what i can manage to carry my upper body strength has never been particularly great my leg my strength has always been in my legs um but i carried him in and had to maneuver through two doors and then there was like a a, a gate that was up to hip height and I, instead of the people in the in the place actually opening it for me I had to kind of barge it with my hip and I think that might have been part of what caused what happened next um so I got him on the table his nails were clipped um he coped really well 
I carried him back out, put him down, and I felt my back twinge just a bit. Um, but I thought I was okay. Um, I then went back to my mum's and walked one of the um, other old dogs, um, who's a Labrador. So she needs long walks. So I took her for a lot uh, for a long walk. Um, got to see one of my old neighbours because my mum lives on the estate where I grew up. So I bumped into our old next door neighbour. Had a long chat with him. Um, had a nice walk, but because um, my Labrador, although she's an old dog, she's still very strong. Uh, just occasionally, she got a bit excited. Just every, you know, I put her on a flexi lead, and she pulls. And when it gets to the end of the flexi lead, it yanks, and she's just running about. And that's what I want her to do. She does walk to heel, so she doesn't normally pull. It's just when I let her sort of run off on a longer lead. And I think the jarring didn't help my back as well with that. Still didn't think too much of it. Uh, came home, went in the garden just to check on a couple of things because we've had builders here, they keep leaving the gates open. Um, so I went to check the gates were looked properly, spotted a couple of weeds in the border, bent down to pick them up and my back went. Um, somehow I managed to stand up uh, in absolute agony. My It was my lower back and the whole, just my muscles were just completely in spasm right the way across my back, lower back. Um, I somehow got up the stairs and into the flat. I don't know how I managed it, but I did. And basically, that's been it, been it for my week. Um, I've had to just sit and not really do very much because the last few days I've been in quite substantial pain for the last three days. Yesterday it was a little bit better. Today it's a lot better than it was. It is still twin. I can still feel that the muscles are not right. Uh, but the spasm's gone. The spasm was what was absolutely killing me. Uh, for those of you that have got permanent back problems, I honestly, honestly don't know how you cope with it. I really don't. Um, I've been so frustrated and I'm not good at pain. I'm a complete wimp. So um, my back is on the mend. So I just want to, those of you that are on Facebook that saw me, I did put in, um, if you want to keep up to date with me, the best way is to follow me on Facebook, either on the page or the group. Uh, because that's where I tend to put all my statuses up. I tend to forget about Twitter and Instagram quite a lot. So I'm very much a Facebook bunny. So I did put an update on this. Just want to say thank you to all you guys that sent me well wishes. Um, and, you know, wish me well for the funeral and stuff. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And obviously those of you that have wished me well on YouTube as well with the funeral, I um, just want to say a big thank you. Um, it's, it's just so lovely to have so much support from you all. And I, I really do appreciate it. Um, so rest assured I am on the mend, um, that is why um, it's only been one video this week, I'm recording this on Friday the 8th of July, um, so I'm hoping to get this up uh, tomorrow on Saturday, um, yeah so uh, my back is a lot better, I can move around and stuff, I just can't bend down to pick things up, so I'm being uber super careful so i'm hoping by next week hopefully my back will be completely mended and i can get back to normal um i do have problems with my backs from time to time i did go and see my doctor about it once he told me that my core strength wasn't uh, good enough and that i needed to work on that but then didn't really tell me how to do that so i'm really none the wiser on, on what i should be doing but basically said having a back problems at my age not good um i quite i quite often get sciatica pain sort of like shooting down the legs and all that not all the time but um i do have to be careful with my back obviously being a carer it's been um a little bit of a nightmare so um i'm very lucky that my friend that i care for is mobile so um it could have been a lot more catastrophic than it was um so we've managed between us but thank you for those of you that were concerned for both of us i really do appreciate um the concern it you know it's not not appreciated so um but we're both okay so please don't worry um so that's all i've really got news wise um, because my back has been the topic of the week really um but i'm doing a lot better and so i'm hoping by sort of early next week that uh that sort of it'll be back to normal so i've just got to be super careful i'm not very patient <laughs> i'm not known for my patience so <laughs> waiting for things to heal is not my strong point um, but yeah, so um, so that's it. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next week. I might put a yarn haul in from Jan because I've still got tons of stuff from Jan that I still haven't shown. Um, so I may do that. Um, 
I'm working on a sheep that was a kit that my friend bought me, uh, which I'll be keeping for myself. So um, that is something that I'm working on, which might get finished for next week. I don't know. I'm going to be working on it later today. Um, other than that, I haven't really thought about what I'm going to do next. So um, your guess is as good as mine. So I really be surprised for the next video. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so um, that's it for today. Um, as you can tell, I haven't seen many people. I'm a little bit waffly today, so sorry about that. Um, so until next time, I'm going to end it here. Uh, remember to stay well, happy crafting, and until next time, remember to stay true to yourself. Bye.